struggle. Brawless <laughs> review of I May Destroy You. Now, before we even get into this review, my voice is like Bot City. <sighs> Hurt my knee this weekend, so that's the whole thing. But you know what? We gonna try to do this review anyway, because if I don't do it now, I'm not gonna do it at all. So I hope you guys can hear me clearly. This is The Cause and the Cure, episode 10. So we start off, we see a little girl and we are informed that of course this little girl is uh, Arabella. Uh, she's with her brother, they're waiting. She is waiting and she's waiting. And we find out that she's waiting for her dad. Now, dad gets there and she says, um, I thought we were gonna get McDonald's. But he hands her a brown paper bag full of French fries. And as quick, quickly as he hands them to her, he's gone, he's out the door. Didn't even bother to sit. And we see her scoffing down these fries, like shoving them down. And the mom, you know, she's thinking, slow down still going and you know she's eating and eating she's like I, I told you he'd be here I told you he'd come so we can already kind of see maybe dad is it the best dad but um she throws up and then we cut to adult Arabella whose room is clean her room is clean it's fresh like it I don't know if she opened some blinds, but there's all this lead in there now. That anatomy picture is on the wall. It looks really clean. It's like she's cleaning house. And then she sees uh, Simon's sweater, which reminds her of Simon. We have not um, heard much from Simon this season. And Arabella herself has, uh, she hasn't seen Simon in almost a year now because we're like at 10 or 11 months of Post, so now uh, we cut to assault. Terry. But um, Terry is rehearsing. Terry is running lines. Terry is running lines. We have not seen Terry rehearse, go on any auditions, anything actress in the making related since episode two when they asked her to remove her wig and, you know, can we see your natural hair? Terry has been consumed whether it was for support because down deep down terry is a great friend or whether it was from a place of guilt she has been all cons all too consumed with arabella's health her safety her mental state her therapy her art her zumba her everything and also now you know kind of mother figure figure to kwame but we have not seen much just about terry i would really love to know where Terry has stashed this money, <laughs> this secret fund that she apparently has to fund all of these things for Bella. Cause she, she doesn't work. We have not seen her get any work. Even during her party, she was, you know, going on and on about how she keeps trying and trying, even though she keeps getting rejected and doesn't get a call back. But um, Terry's rehearsing. <laughs> finally which is good to see um now while she's rehearsing we see that bella is all too into this new book called the sundial and she loves it we also see that uh, arabella mom mom called and i was too excited to see her mom and you know a brother a father because when traumatic incidents like this happen and you know we see people seeking support and needing help and needing love and affection that comes from a right place unlike a Biagio the first question is where is her mom where is her sister where is her family where where you know where's that family dynamic and now this episode we finally get to see and you know mom is you know really excited we find out that it's her mother's birthday and you know uh, Ben and Terry you know happy birthday 
to you and Bella instantly gets in. Yeah, so what time is uh what time is that gonna be there? Very quickly. This is her mom's birthday, but you know what time is dad gonna be there? We also see that she got a phone call from her dad previously in the bedroom. And she was so excited to get this phone call. She was so excited to get this phone call. And she's, you know, constantly double checking, you know, what time are you coming? You're gonna be there, right? And we see that, you know, dad is probably one of those dads who, you know, make those makes those false promises of, you know, I'll be there to pick you up at this time. And, you know, you get that image of that lonely kid just waiting, watching the cars go by until you fall asleep where you are but um we're told that dad will be there at five and uh we see Kwame we get a little moment with Kwame Kwame is I was excited first because we saw Kwame working out first and I was like oh that's right Kwame you no know, channel those frustrations in a positive way but no as he's running, he gets that um, infamous grinder message. Don't even know what they say at this point. Does it really matter what they say? Because they all insinuate the same things. But we see that Kwame is now going through a slew of men. We see men after men after men. You know, these exchanges on the bus. But unlike previously, we've seen Kwame in the past... Um, not bring anybody back to his home and back to his bedroom we seen him you know hey hey i'm at this location kwame's off and he's going we seen him hiccup in a public uh bathroom stall and we even seen him go out of his way to find that second party which was horny man 808 so that uh him and damon could be alone did not bring him back to his his room but man after man, these casual encounters that we are seeing on the bus are having sex in Kwame's bed, in Kwame's space, in Kwame's room. Now, I don't know if this is um, for, you know, safety purposes, because the last time he did venture out to meet someone somewhere, he was assaulted. But I remember from the... Uh, the latest episode when he you know tried to go out on a date as soon as you know that went <laughs> unexpectedly left he um got on grinder saw the location and he left so it just looks like kwame has just given up kwame has given up like it is what it is kwame looks like a strung out addicted person and i'm just you know on this bus getting my fixes until now, we cut to Arabella and her friends on the patio area. Now, is this a London thing or because I'm like, why are they climbing through the window and not using a door? There can't be a door. But anyway, <laughs> we find out that Arabella, you know, still holding the sundial book, by the way, because we're consumed with it because it's so amazing. It's speaking to her. She, um, she's been spending all of her free time at the ego death bar well outside of the ego death bar watching and terry and ben are like you know what are you doing why are you doing that it's not healthy and she's like you know this is what i want to do this is where i want to be i'm lurking i'm watching because that's what i want to do ben and terry especially terry look very very concerned for her then we see her puff on a vape and she's continuing to puff on this vape and there's nothing there and Ben's like, honey, is empty. And she's like, well, yeah, it is, huh? Hmm. And Terry looks like she's about to break down. We finally get an appearance from Simon. Which was very nice to see. I was waiting for this moment. Because we knew that when we did get to see Simon... Simon was going to drop that bomb, and boy, did he drop that bomb. But first, <laughs> let's just stick to the sweater. Arabella gives um, Simon back his sweater. And we see that Simon is 
he's all like really dark, all dressed in black. He has his hood on, he's smoking a cigarette and kind of looking a little off the grid. And she's like, you know, I went by here, I didn't see you. It's like, you know, you probably saw Kat. It kind of looks like maybe he's uh, been separated from Kat due to that first episode of, um, oh gosh, Alyssa, the beautiful bald chick. Um, but yeah, Simon looks a bit sad, but he also looks really relieved and excited to see Arabella after a year. Now instantly we're met with a flashback of the assault and it's Simon this time. And Arabella looks a little shook, but it's not from her really believing that he would do that. It's more so guilt of, I'm feeling bad because I ever thought you would do that to me. And Simon's, you know, you know, it's okay. They're exchanging apologies. And Simon lets her know that, you know, I wanted to be there, but I just couldn't. And I'm so glad that everything's out in the open. And you know that Terry is the one who told me to leave you there in the first place. I'm so glad she talked to you. And immediately Arabella's like, what are you talking about? It was very nice to see them genuinely make up and forgive each other and Arabella be in a positive space but it was very hard for her to hear about you know what her friend did the secret that she's been keeping from her this entire year we get into Arabella's family we get to see her mom and her brother and all of this wonderful food being cooked in the kitchen I don't know what it was but they made it look really delicious and I just saw it being prepped but you know if it's seasoned well then that means it's good but um, we are met with an Aunt Chanel or Arnell, one or the other. But as soon as she um, enters the room, Arabella becomes really childlike. Like she just looked a little, <sighs> kinda acted as if she didn't remember who she was and like I want to say something, but I don't. It looked very childlike to me the way her body was moving in, in the chair. But um, it doesn't look like they want her there. The situation looks very uncomfortable. Of course, we find out why. But as soon as Mom comes in, and you know, you know, I came to you know wish you a happy birthday. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Well, I just stopped by to bring you this. I didn't forget your birthday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, bye. Clearly, auntie is not wanted. And at this point, I'm thinking like, damn, you don't, you don't want to see your sister? Because I did say auntie. <laughs> but um, we were met with another flashback, which is the um, following, you know, what we saw in the beginning of the episode. It's the kids sitting there waiting for dad to take them to mcdonald's and they're waiting and they've waited for so long that they've gotten so hungry her brother goes and you know gets a snack and he's like i couldn't wait any longer but she's still you know has those high hopes like he's coming i'm not eating the thing until my dad gets here because he told me so he instantly we see the um the dynamic of sister brother like i'm not waiting on him girl i'm hungry <laughs> but um we see younger versions of mom and aunt and auntie is telling mom, you know, like he's horrible. He's never going to be anything. He's always making promises he can't keep. He's not a good man. And instantly we see mom making excuses for him. Instantly. So we kind of already see the house dynamic and her upbringing and what she feels like maybe acceptable behavior from men. But we immediately see that she, she loves her dad. Instantly, we cut back to the actual birthday dinner. Many years later, we're still waiting on dad. We're still at the table. We're still waiting. Granted, mom and dad are not together. I don't know if this is a culture thing or, you know, but mom is like, we're not eating until he gets here. Don't touch a thing. Don't eat a thing. We're not eating until your father gets here. He says he's coming. We're going to wait. 
the brother is about to die. <laughs> like, can I just get a plantain? Can I get something? It's like, no, we're not eating until your father gets here. Unlike the brother, Arabella is happy to wait because she wants to see her father. It's like she's longing. Like, we can see that probably many times over, I'm coming, I'm coming to get you, baby girl. I'm coming to spend time with you guys. And he probably didn't show Dad up. Dad finally arrives late. <laughs> um, you know, we see mom, you know, adjusting, fixing the hair, trying to make sure she looks good. And you kind of get the sense that maybe mom is, or maybe at least once upon a time, kind of pined after dad. She hasn't, you know, married or anything. Currently doesn't have anyone else there. And he was just probably something she had faith in that never happened. But he gets there and we see uh, Bella's feet are like on their tippy toes like in her gorgeous cheekbones are here because she's smiling so hard she's so happy to see her dad she's so happy that he just graced him with you know his presence because who knows how many times he he has it but instantly dad is critiquing he's criticizing the brother most mostly because you know by that age i you know, I had a house, I had a family, I was I was this and I was that. Granted, the brother is in college. He's, you know, going, from what it sounds like, going to grad school and pops could care less. Like, where's your family? Like, he has values elsewhere. But um, he gets into a story of, you know, when he had an orange Toyota and when his home was vandalized. And instantly, all these years later, he brings it to Arabella's attention. You know, how do you think that these burglars even got into my house? You left the window open. We'll get back to that window. You left the window open for them to, you know, come in and rob my house and take these set of keys that I have to come back after robbing my house of everything and take my orange Toyota. Arabella looks frightened and you know she's her eyes are welling up with tears we get a flashback of her and Terry walking as young girls and you know she's approached by a boy and you know wants to go you know to her dad's house to make herself look cute you know she's in her uniform and go back and do schoolgirl things but um we instantly see what kind of relationship they have this is your own daughter and you don't have a key like you didn't give your daughter a key. She has to go through the window to get to your house. And you know, Terry's investigating, like, this is weird. You don't have a key? Are they married? Are they not? Like, what's your family dynamic? And Arabella is, you know, brushing it off. Like, no, they're not married. They're together, but they're not married. They're together, but they just live in different, you know, different spaces. You know what, I, I don't have a key. I use this window. She's making excuses for her dad's behavior, which is clearly bad. But um, we see uh, Arabella climb through the window and she's going up to, you know, change her clothes. And we see auntie, we see auntie in daddy's dress shirt. Auntie is speechless. Auntie has nothing to say. Clearly, Auntie is not a sister, and she's just, you know, somebody really close to the family, a friend, and you just address them as Auntie. But okay. But, you know, she's like, you know, don't even say nothing. Let me go back downstairs and exit. We hear Dad pulling up and coming out of the door, coming through the door, and Bella just leaves. She doesn't make a scene. She doesn't say anything. Up until this point at the dinner table, she's completely pushed it to the side and held it in and kept this secret, not only from her dad, but from her mom, who was being cheated on with um, her mom's friend. So we instantly see that 
you know, she has been holding on and feeling guilty about it, which is why she begins to cry and excuse herself from the table. So Bella's excused herself and, you know, mom goes to check on her and um, she's crying. And it could be both from, you know, not yet telling her family about the situation or just feeling sorry for her mom. Like, you know, I held this secret in and also in the process of that, my dad was at the time robbed of all of his precious, precious things. But um, her name is Lenora. That's her name. She goes, you know, is Lenora really your friend? And mom's like, yeah. And she also, you know, messed around with your dad. And Bella's taking like, you know, you, you knew this whole time. She's like, yeah, but I don't care. You know, I'm looking good. I'm still sexy. I care about my babies. I care about my kids. And then, you know, Arabella finally tells her mom what happens to her. We don't, you know, physically see it, but we, it's implied. That was so important. That was so important and such a stepping stone in the right direction for healing for her the fact that she could share that with her mom even if it wasn't shared you know with the entire family her dad and brother she shared that with her mom which i know was you know hard for, for her coming from you know that strong background you know they expect things to go a certain way. Parents don't expect the the unexpected, you know, those harsh, cruel things to happen to their kids. But sharing that with her mom and, you know, we hear that. We haven't kind of seen that vape a little bit. We've seen, you know, that room clean, her, you know, talking to Simon, her hearing the news about Terry. Everything is coming full circle, circle for Arabella to start her healing process. We cut to Kwame. Kwame, you know, has a new grinder suitor, but he goes to what looks to be his place. So before when they were in, you know, Kwame's room, man after man after man, this was not a safety precaution. Kwame has given up on any chance of saving Kwame, healing Kwame. Kwame's like, I'm here for fun. I'm here for sex. I'm here for now. I'm not dealing with that every opportunity Kwame has had to address it and have support he's avoided it and gone to have sex with men but this man in particular we see that his um his room is really clean he has uh you know soft music planning Kwame immediately comes in like Kwame is used to things going a certain type of way Kwame is ready to take his clothes off Kwame is ready to have sex that's what Kwame does Kwame doesn't care to do anything else Kwame doesn't care to connect but this man has music playing he's cooked food that looks good and Kwame's like you want me to eat like are you are you new to this or are you dumb this is not what this is about. This is not a courting, dating situation. This app is for sex. If I'm not here to have sex with you, then why am I here? And this gentleman <laughs> is like, you know, there's more to it than just having sex all the time. Maybe I just want to get to know you first. He's very um, reminiscent of Damon, but this guy is clearly already comfortable in his sexuality he knows what he wants granted he was on grinder and um he sent Kwame a message that said uh, I want fun or fun now and Kwame interpreted that as you know sex and well of course because fun now but he's like you know I say that I was you know trying to get you here and he's like what are you trying to get me here for if you don't want to have sex it's like well I like the way you looked. I like your pictures. And let's eat. Let's have dinner. Kwame is about to leave. But, you know, he has a second thought and sits down and has dinner. Which is completely different than what we've seen. 
I'm feeling like this is something Kwame needs to heal. Because if we kept going with, you know, sexual partner after sexual partner, this is something different. No one's ever giving him the option to stay, sit, talk, eat. I want to see where this goes. Like, it's exciting because Kwame was about to leave and his emotions didn't let him. It's like this guy, this stranger, saw through that sexual persona. Like, it's something there that goes deeper than that. And I want to know that part. And Kwame's like, I want to leave. But he know he doesn't because he know he, he needs that in his life. So he, you know, turns around, those Kwame tears. And he's like, well, if we're not going to have sex, can I, can I just have a hug? I just, I just want to hug. And he hugs him. He gives him the sweetest, strongest, sentimental male on male hug, like... I wanted a hug after that. It's like, damn, I want a hug. But, <sighs> yes, Kwame, yay, Kwame, yay, first of all, go Kwame. Yes, Kwame, this is what I was waiting for, for Kwame. Because he wasn't going to heal by himself. Some people can do it by themselves. Kwame was stuck, and maybe this man can get him up stuck from that hug. It looked like he got instantly unstuck. But okay. So he sits down and, you know, eats his food. But um, we get to, you know, Arabella sitting outside of the bar waiting for Terry. And, you know, we know now that she has this, this news that Terry has been withholding. So we don't know if she's going to blow up, if she's going to freak out. We're just waiting. Terry sits and lets her know that, you know, her audition went well. And this waiter comes up, Kai. Kwame's kind of, Kwame. <laughs> Terry's kind of, you know, giving him the eye. Little situation there. But uh, Terry says our audition went well. And Arabella says, you know, my dad did come after all. And she also says that, you know, she met up with Simon. And immediately Terry's kind of taken back. Like, you know, well, yeah, how did that go? She's like, we talked. We talked about everything. And like with not a lot of dialogue, everything is said. We see instantly that Terry is so sorry. And we're met with, you know, your death is my death. Your birth is my birth. And it just felt like even though, you know, you lied to me you've been you know withholding the secret you've been so supportive of me this whole year and you are and have still been my friend you know since we were kids i'm hurting but i'm not going to let you go or our friendship go over this your death is my death your birth is my birth we're still like this no matter what and you see terry is just so she's so sorry she's so broken you know she's going over you know everything that they've been through this like everything they've gone gone through this year like i was here for you i was here for that and love me for that reason and how much else is spoken about it it's like it's understood i'm hurt you're hurt but you're my friend your death is my death your birth is my birth i'm not going anywhere you're not going anywhere. Seeing how sincere Terry was and transparent in that moment kind of took a couple of notches off for me because I'm not the biggest Terry fan. It kind of made me see how deep their friendship goes and that everything is not instantly deaded over one mistake because Everyone makes mistakes. We cut back to Arabella with her family at the dinner table. Everything goes completely unspoken, but we see that mother-daughter connection of no matter what's going on, and you know, they may not know, but I know, and I'm here to support you, which was so important. I'm so glad she told her mom, you know, support, you know, from the um, 
you know, the group of ladies and Fat Theodora and Ben, even, um, you know, Kwame at a certain point and Terry, it's all great, it's all fabulous. It's always great to have different sources of help, but it's something different when it's your mom which is why I know, you know, she held that back for so long because when you say some things like that, it kind of makes your mom or whoever, your brother, your dad, see you in a different light. So that was an important step for her. And cutting back to dad, I don't think she told dad because just like, you know, a Terry who's been there to support, what can I do? How can I help? And having that transparent moment of, Yes, I did say, you know, to leave you there, but I'm sorry. And I've been, you know, the best friend to you through that situation and situations to come. But at the end of the day, this is nor Terry's fault or Simon's fault. And as Dad said before, you left the window open <laughs> for this to happen to me. And it's like she took it in turn internally, like, you know, maybe I left the window open for that to happen to me. Which is why, you know, she kind of broke down at the table. When the case is, no one left the window open. Yes, you are responsible for yourself. But given this particular day, unlike, you know, that day in Italy with, you know, all the drugs, Bella was chosen by some random stranger and you know attacked and this is what happened to her no one left the window open so that's why it's so easy to forgive a terry or a simon and pick and choose what you want to share with your cheating dad <laughs> but um we just end up on that note and he's seen terry arabella and kwame kind of do a full 180 this episode everybody is coming into their own and coming full circle and truths have came out friendships have been mended bonds have been made new bonds have been made and we see all of our characters making strides in the right direction <sighs> isn't it nice to get one of these i may destroy you episodes you can just kind of can finally kind of breathe with everything that's been hitting you in the head for a full season but it, it's looking like it's going to end nice so i look forward to seeing you know 11 and 12 and putting a nice little bow on our on our reviews but um thank you guys for watching i am so sorry for my condition this video <laughs> but i just was not feeling it today and i'm not feeling well look all dry <laughs> oh god <laughs> but um i'm looking forward to you know getting more content as i get more subscribers and more support i think i'm gonna try to review um love lovecraft country starring you know johnny smollett and uh jonathan mayers it looked amazing so i can't wait to you know give that to you guys and see where we can go with that but um, this was I May Destroy You, The Cure and The Cause. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you come back, like, come back and subscribe because I'm, like, struggling, like, hard. I wish y'all could see my disgusting, banged up, swollen knee. But it's no need to that because I, I, said, it verbal, I said it verbally. So subscribe because I care enough to get on here with my dry lips and my busted bum knee. <laughs>